Welcome, my internet foodies. I'm so glad that you clicked play on this video. If you are new to my channel, I'm so glad that you joined me. My name's Amanda. Um, I like to try to show people how to start cooking without a recipe. I've been cooking for 25 years and I just get dinner on the table. I rarely follow recipes. Actually, I think it's in my DNA to not follow a recipe. Recipes have their place. They just don't do well with me. Tonight I'm making, as you saw, um, stuffed bell peppers and I make them lots of different ways. This is one of my favorite ways, a kind of Italian-y sort of twist. Um, but this is um, a meal that is really good for days when you might need to break it up. Like you could cook it all at once, but like today is really busy for me. And I have like an hour between now and my next appointment. So I'm gonna quickly get part of this meal started and then come back to more of it later. So, well, let's just go ahead and get it going and I'll tell you more about that as we go. All right, so first, the bell peppers. Um, oftentimes I use green bell peppers. Today, or when I was at the store, the red and orange ones were a really good price. So they're so much more bright and cheerful. So I went ahead and got those. Um, <clears throat> what I tend to do is I will cut off the tops by kind of rotating around and then like kind of pulling and twisting at the same time. And that'll give you the seed pocket. Now, sometimes if you want to like do this for company and you want to be fancy, you can, <laughs> you can, you see how I say that, fancy. Uh, you can cut the seed part off. Here, I'll do that for one of these because it might make it look pretty for the photo. You gotta have that photo, right? And then you can roast this alongside and then after you stuff them, you can like top it and it's like, oh, fancy dish. But you know, most of the time I just will either dice this up and cook it in with the stuffing or just toss it out depending on what I want to do. Now I'm doing good to get my kids to eat even half of a bell pepper. So with one of them, <clears throat> what I actually do is just cut it in half like this and I'll take my fingers under the seed pocket and just pull up. And then that will give me a good little bell pepper boat. <clears throat> so I'm gonna do that with this one right here over the sink so the seeds don't fly everywhere. And then I'll stuff up half of the bell pepper, which will be a good kid portion. So, um, ha <laughs> So if you cut a little too far in, the seed didn't come with it. Oh, see that first time I rotated around, twisted. This time I sliced off. So again, I'm just gonna stick my fingers in there, grab out the seeds and throw them. I didn't grab my trash bowl today like I normally do. So I'm gonna save this and dice it up into the bell pepper, uh, the stuffing, I mean. Okay, and this one I'll do that rotate thing again. Rotate around. I'm gonna save this to put in the thing, in the stuffing, and toss that into the sink. All right, so now we have various bell peppers and we're going to roast them. So let me get my oven. Um, huh, roast cooking methods. This is a fancy touch screen thing. I'm gonna do it at like 425. And so some people will roast their bell peppers. They will stuff them raw and then bake them. I find that the bell peppers just never get as cooked as I like them. So I like to pre-roast them before stuffing them. If you prefer more of a crunchy bell pepper, then um, feel free to skip this step, stuff your bell peppers, and then roast them all at the end together. Okay, now I've got uh, olive oil all over my fingers, so I'm gonna wash them off. So today is my husband and my uh, 18th anniversary. I mean, I, this won't go up for a couple of days, but so I'm kind of just lightly salting them. 
And then my oven is an number to temperature, but I don't even care. I'm just gonna pop them in and they'll roast and I'm not worried about, oh, it needs to be 20 minutes. I'll just keep an eye on them. When they start to look like they're getting soft, we will pull them out. All right, let me back up my camera a bit. Yeah, so it's our 18th anniversary today. I'm so excited. Um, originally, we were going to order dinner in. We've been very COVID cautious. We have not gone out to restaurants during COVID, um, but we have gone and picked up food to go a couple of times. Um, and so that was our original plan, but then he ended up having a business meeting tonight and I started a yoga, so I'm really into yoga. I'm almost in my two years of daily yoga. So I started a yoga Facebook group and since he had a meeting tonight, I decided I'm gonna pop on to my Facebook group um, during his meeting and do a month, uh, March 1st, you know, video chat for anybody who wants to start their daily yoga journey. Um, so that's exciting. At the end of March is my two years of everyday yoga. It's been an amazing, amazing experience. I'm so glad I started that April, 2019. All right, so I'm peeling up some garlic. I have no patience for peeling garlic but I love garlic. All right, so now that I got my garlic peeled, I'm gonna turn my skillet on to kind of a medium, medium low, just to kind of get it, get it kind of going. And um, so this one, I'm using a stainless steel. You can use a nonstick. Um, you could use your cast iron. I, I cook with my cast iron all the time. Um, but today I'm just using my stainless steel one. Okay. Now I peeled my garlic, but I'm just setting it aside. I'm going to chop up my onion first. So this is a sweet onion. Uh, you could also use a white onion, whatever onions you have in your pantry will work. Um, I prefer sweet onions because they don't make me cry as much as white onions do. I, I don't know if that's like across the board or if that's just a personal thing with me. I've noticed, uh, it's kind of interesting. I really should uh, ask, other <laughs> I've got the internet at my disposal. If you have noticed whether white or sweet onions make you tear up more, please comment below, let me know, I'm very curious. It's just something that I kind of observed for myself. Okay, so let me show you what I'm doing again. Um, I got my half onion and I'm slicing it into slices. So just one way, so you've got like big slices. Then I turn my onion and I cut it the other way. I'm not being too picky or fussy, you know, dropping some on the floor not on purpose. <laughs> um, just You just want to think about the size of your onion. You want your pieces to be small enough that when you bite into it, it's an appropriate size for the rest of the stuffing. All right, I'm going to put a chunk of butter in my skillet. My pug Watson is, oh, you can't see him. He's trying to see what I dropped and if it's interesting. I don't think you like onion, Watson. Okay, so get those going. Now I'm gonna chop up this um, extra bell pepper. And if you wanna keep your pretty tops, then you would leave this out of the stuffing. But, you know, I like to, oh, I forgot to put this top in there. Let me throw that in there so it'll get the same appearance as all the other ones. Um, so as you can see, I'm just kind of rough chopping it. My knives are so dull, guys. Oh, this week has been, it's already, it's Monday and it's already busy. I'm like, I've got to find time to take my knives to the knife guy. It's been probably five years since I've sharpened my knives. Uh, and I've been saying that in a couple of videos here, but it is on my to-do list. I will get there. 
it just means I need to plan a couple of dinners because I don't want to take half my knives and then go and have to take the other half. That'd be one solution. Um, but I think the solution I'm going to go with is I'm going to pull my camping knife out of the camp gear and use it for a couple. He only keeps my knife for a couple days when he does it, but still it's like long departed friends. All right, I'm going to give my garlic a rough chop. A lot of times I talk about throwing out the root end, but this, these particular cloves I noticed don't really have a very big root end. And since we're sauteing, I, what I am doing is flicking out. There's a couple pieces of the uh, papery part of the garlic. So I'm flicking those out of the way because I don't want those. I'm just giving it a nice little rough chop. Um, I keep my point down on the cutting board and just kind of rotate around carefully. Get it off. I use my knife as a scoop a lot of times. And as long as you're, you know, not rubbing your finger this way down your blade and rubbing it along the side, you're fine. Okay, now here's what I'm gonna show you. A lot of times in this recipe, um, oh, I was gonna do the mushrooms, but you know what? I'm gonna grab some celery, so I'll be right back. So if you don't have celery, leave it out. If you do have celery and you like celery, put it in. Okay, I'm just gonna use one stalk. Let me give it a quick rinse. All right. Whew. Okay, I'm gonna lower this. I can smell it. Um, I don't really want the onions to caramelize. I just want them to get translucent. So I don't want the heat up too high. And I'm gonna run my knife down the length of the celery a couple of times. Cause I want fairly small pieces. Wow, this isn't cutting very nicely for me today. All right, again, see if you can see this. Um, hmm. Feels like normally my cutting board is a little bit more visible. I don't know. All right, so I've got them lined up. My fingers are curved. My knife tip is going to stay on the cutting board. Cutting... Cutting celery is, I think, one of the most satisfying things to cut in the kitchen. So you just kind of whip down it, and it's like a fun one to show off your quick uh, knife skill, skills. And my knife skills are like nothing compared to like a professional chef. I'm just a home cook, guys. Just a home cook, enjoying cooking. A long time ago, I had a food blog but that really wasn't my thing because I don't do recipes. So it's really hard to have a blog in written form and like a recipe when you're like, oh, just, you know, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But showing it off in video is a little bit more helpful to actually show the kind of content I want. Okay, guys, <sighs> my mushrooms, they got sad this week. I pulled them out of the refrigerator and these are very, very sad looking mushrooms. So normally what I'll do is you saw I have this towel on it. I'll, I'll put my mushrooms that I don't use, I cover it with a towel and that helps absorb um, moistures that they leave off. And then I cover it with plastic, but I didn't cover it with plastic this week and they just, they got rotten fast. So sadly, I'm not gonna be able to use them, but uh, you can just leave them out. Or I happen to have some canned mushrooms that I keep in the pantry. Um, and so they'll work for a dish like this. So I'm going to drain them really quick. It's so funny. I used to be like seriously the biggest food snob and I would have been like canned mushrooms. No way. Why would you use canned mushrooms? But for one thing nowadays you can buy brands where they don't add a bunch of preservatives. I mean, this is mushrooms, water, salt, and a little bit of vitamin C to keep them um, preserved. Like, it does have a little bit of preservative, but it's vitamin C. I mean, what's wrong with that? Um, so these are sliced, but I want them to be a little bit smaller. So I put them on my cutting board, and I'm just going to run my knife over them. And so, yeah, ideally, I would prefer to have uh, fresh mushrooms in this dish. But you know what? We're just winging it because we're going to use what we have and 
my mushrooms went bad fast this week so um in a stuffing canned mushrooms are perfect i mean they're just going to kind of blend into the stuffing so it's a very good use of the mushroom too okay i'm going to turn it back up and we're going to go ahead and get the beef in so a lot of times like if i'm doing stir fry or like my greek bowls i take my vegetables out um but okay i'm actually going to put this back on high because i really want it to get cooking so i'll take the vegetables out before i put the meat in but in this dish it really doesn't bother me to just put the meat in with the vegetables so um i like these uh ground beefs that come in a little log so i cut like i did around the bell pepper and then I cut down the length and it kind of opens up and just comes all out. All right, let me clean up here a little bit. Got some mess. Make sure these get back in the sink because they touched raw meat now. Okay, I like using flat wooden spoons and one of the reasons why is for, if you're doing beef, it's really good to help break up your ground beef. What time is it? 1.42. I'm like, okay. Got to keep an eye on my clock because I do have an appointment in a little bit. Um, and when I get to chat and I lose track of time. <laughs> so once, one reason why I started my YouTube channel is because I love to talk so much. And, you know, I know a lot of us in COVID just are missing out on friends and social experiences. And I was that kind of person who um, really loves connecting with people and so while you know you're not really in my kitchen I can like get some kind of satisfaction that I'm talking and you're listening and you're learning and you're hopefully commenting um, and asking questions and you know um, it's definitely helped me this last month that I started if I started at the end of January and now it's March 1st today like I said when this goes up it won't be March 1st um, <clears throat> this last month has just been so great. I've had subscribers come to my channel and, oh, my oven just told me it's done preheating. <laughs> and, um, I've had fun editing. I've had fun, fun learning about, you know, how to do a YouTube channel. But the main reason is I've just always, always loved cooking you know those memes where they're talking about why do people post food pictures on social media? I was seriously one of those people. I'm always posting pictures because I just wanted to share. Food is like a community to me. So um, it just kind of like, hey, YouTube is my platform. I can, you know, teach people how to cook, have a good conversation, you know. So thank you so much for being here. If this sounds like something that you enjoy, you know, hit the subscribe button and be part of my community. All right, so I'm trying to let this break up and then I'm just gonna leave it alone for a little bit so that the meat has a chance to get brown. I've got it on rip roaring hot. <clears throat> and I'm like clearing my throat, I'm so thirsty. Okay, and then we're gonna add some tomatoes and some tomato paste. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> it's, this was lean beef, by the way. Um, but it's still kind of adding a lot of grease. So some of that isn't grease though. This, some of this is the moisture from the canned mushrooms. It wouldn't be this. That's probably what it is. I'm like, this isn't uh, typical. <laughs> Now, if you do have a lot of grease in your pan, you can uh, drain it. I think this will cook off. I, like I said, I think it's actually moisture, not grease. Let me show you one. So you can see it's still not cooked all the way through, which is fine. But um, see, that's most of that is actually just liquid. It's not actually uh, from the meat. It's just the vegetables cooking off. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add my tomato paste. Um, <clears throat> just a couple of good squirts. Oh, and then seasonings. 
Got so busy I forgot to season this. This would be very, very bland. Actually, I'm going to go with one more squirt. Um, <clears throat> tomato paste has like a, it'll just like really intensify the flavor of the diced tomatoes we have here. If you don't have tomato paste, you can put a little ketchup in or you can just leave it out. Ketchup will add a little hint of sweetness in the background. All right, I'm going to salt, pepper, and put some Italian seasoning. So I have an Italian mix here, um, which is basically, it's basil, oregano, some parsley. So you can just use whatever your favorite Italian mix is, or you can just stick with basil. You can get as complicated with the seasonings or keep it simple. Um, <clears throat> you could also add, we put some garlic cloves, but you could add some more garlic powder to this. So one thing is that most people tend to under season their food. So go ahead and be a little brave tonight, guys. Put an extra pinch in there, okay? I mean, unless people tell you, you over season all the time, go ahead and try to put in a little bit more than you normally would. Don't worry about tablespoons or teaspoons. You got this. Okay. Looking really good. You know what? I'm not even sure I'm going to add this tonight. See, that's how I cook. I'm like, ah, eh, you know, like I have an idea in my head where I'm going, but I said every time I make this dish, it's a little bit different. And I just don't think I need the extra tomatoes tonight. I'm going to give it a taste and we'll see. Now that my beef is cooked through I can okay I'm gonna actually lower it oh yeah that is so good okay now I've got to tell y'all I made some rice in the instant pot earlier to add to this so you can um, use instant rice you can use leftover rice or you can make some rice on your stove or in your instant pot I'm really sad. I think my Instapot is dying. Um, let me show you this. I don't know if you can tell. I already stirred this, uh, but you can see kind of some brown bits, which actually is really tasty, but it's not, it shouldn't do that. Um, I think my heating element in my Instapot is too high and it's making my rice stick. And I tried to make something else the other day that didn't work, <sighs> but I've had it for like over four years. So, I mean, it's given me a lot of service. This was one cup of raw rice that cooked up um, and now I'm going to just incorporate it in now if this was really dry looking that's when I would say okay I need to add this uh, canned tomatoes and I would decide at that point whether I wanted to drain them or just add the um, chunky pieces but <clears throat> my vegetables gave off quite a bit of liquid and I got the tomato sauce from my uh, paste. And so I honestly um, don't think I just, I don't really want to add the canned tomatoes tonight because this is a consistency that I want. You want to think about um, the consistency of your stuffing where it is moist, but that it will like pack down into the bell peppers, which let me check on. They're still, here, let's look at them together. They're still, um, they haven't like started wrinkling up or anything like that. So I'm just going to leave them in there. Okay. So like I said, there are times where you can, uh, this recipe, you can kind of break up into portions. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off and you could, uh, make this part up the night before and roast your bell peppers up the night before. And then all you need to do is stuff them and put them in the oven to bake for a little while later. I usually will top them up with cheese. We'll do that in a minute. Um, but I'm just gonna leave this step. I'm gonna set a timer for these bell peppers since I'm walking away from the stove. I'm gonna check on them in about 15 minutes and then we'll be back to stuff them and show you how to finish off baking them. All right, we are back. I've had an outfit change because I told you today it was like 
a really busy day and I just got back from the chiropractor. Um, I'm gonna set my oven to, oh, let's just go with four, yeah, let's do 375. So as you can see, I'm very like lackadaisical about the heat of the oven. If I want it to cook faster and it's not something specific, I mean, all we're doing is I wanna re, re warm my stuffing and kind of melt the cheese. So I'm not really worried about, you know, actually having anything cooked. Everything we're putting in the oven is already cooked. So I just left this out today covered because um, it wasn't that, it, it hasn't been sitting out for that long. Um, if it had been like all day, I, you know, I would have put it in the refrigerator. So um, you got two options. You can add some cheese to this if you want cheese all mixed through, or you can just, if you want a little bit lighter cheese, just put cheese on top of your stuffed bell peppers. So while this is warming, we'll go ahead and get these stuffed up. So I actually like, they're really soft, which I like it this way. Um, you need to just do it to how you like it, but they are very, very loosey goosey, but the stuffing will, you know, give them some structure too. I might have to do that, hold that one up as I'm doing it. Okay. So yeah, it's pretty hilarious actually that I had to go to the chiropractor because um, so I'm a homeschool mom, right? I have homeschooled my girls since they're in seventh grade now. They've always been homeschooled. Um, and I'm always on the move, moving around, doing whatever. But since starting, <laughs> since starting this YouTube channel, which has been so much fun, I'm actually sitting at my desk more than I used to. And, um, I had this horrible, horrible office chair. I posted on Instagram about it. You should uh, follow me on Instagram at dot. But anyway, uh, I posted <laughs> this horrible office chair because I never sat at my desk, so it didn't really matter. And, uh, but now I'm sitting editing these videos and especially since I'm learning how to do it, it takes a long time. And I threw my shoulder out. So from being improper at my desk and so my shoulder was up like this, while I was doing the mouse and I didn't realize it that, you know, that's what was happening. So chiropractor got me hopefully adjusted. I might have to go back again, <clears throat> but all for y'all, all for y'all. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love it. It's been so much fun learning um, how to do all this. It's always good to keep growing. You know what I mean? Like, I've been cooking for so many years and I, you know, I'm not saying I'm the best cook in the world. I just know how to make dinner and, you know, feed the family. And, and I've learned a lot of fun tricks along the way. So this is that half one. I don't know if you can see. Let me see if I can move this guy out of the way. Come on, you're too tall. You're blocking my view. Okay, so these are the two little half ones that for my kids because... Um, they're 13, but, and they're good eaters. Like they will eat anything that I put in front of them, but they don't necessarily love everything I put in front of them. And they don't like bell peppers that much. So I don't, you know, I'm like, you got to taste it. So if they eat half of it, I'm plenty pleased. Okay. So I don't want this top of this one that I'm going to use later for a photograph because, you know, we're going to be fancy. I don't want that to bake any further because it's just for looks. So I'm going to put it out on a plate. All right, so I'm mounding this up pretty tall. And like I said, you could have mixed some cheese in and got that like cheesy flavor all the way through. But uh, John's birthday was last weekend. We had some pretty heavy meals. We had lots of cupcakes. So um, I'm not a calorie counter, but I just, I like to eat whole real food. This is whole milk mozzarella. I don't like low fat things, but I just think of like moderation and, you know, some nights <clears throat> cheese all the way through would be the way to go. But like I said, we had a bunch of cupcakes this weekend. And so we're just going to have a little bit of enjoyment of cheese on top. And you can leave the cheese off all together. It's all about making the recipe to your family's taste. Now this is mozzarella. Um, topping it with some sharp Parmesan would be really good. 
um, you know, Italian, any kind of Italian blend, Monterey Jack, uh, whatever cheeses you like. This happened to be in my refrigerator because I had um, mozzarella chicken on my menu and I bought a little extra cheese than I needed. So this is what I had. So that's what I'm using. All right, so we'll pop these in the oven and keep an eye on them. My kids are at Taekwondo with dad right now and they should be back soon. So this will probably be the perfect amount of time. And oh my goodness. So yeah, we usually eat, like my husband and I'll eat one of these for dinner. And so I'm just gonna pop them in and I'll show you the finished one at the end like I usually do. I just wanna take a moment to tell you Thank you so much for watching this video. Please hit subscribe. It lets me know that you enjoyed my content. You know, leave a comment, um, ask any kinds of questions that you want about homeschooling, about the food. Um, and I will see you next time, guys. Bye.